I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. And we are in the month of July. Hey, and I told you yesterday, God's plan for you is great. And He's on course to fulfill that plan for your life. Your part is just to listen and hear His voice. That's why I spent the whole of last month teaching you one thing. If you will hear his voice today. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Listen, release your faith for this and you will see God do wonders in your life. Join me right now as we release our faith and declare, say, Father, I demand from heaven my daily bread today in jesus name i receive it everything i need for today is given to me in jesus name amen praise god you know serving jesus christ it's not like serving a normal human being and the earlier you know this and understand and arrange yourself for this service, the better for you. To serve Jesus Christ, you have to be a good listener. And the service of Jesus Christ is not the kind of service that we serve him and we go do other things also. He demands all your attention. Oh, he does demand it. Now, the reason he demands all your attention, I'll tell you this, is because there is nothing you need in life that he has not, hear me, I didn't say that he will not, I said that he has not provided for in his service, nothing. You know, sometimes you, you listen to some ministers who, uh, they've not really disciplined themselves in the truth. Not everybody teaches the Bible right. Or, or rather, let me use the phrase, not everybody teaches the Word of God. To teach the Bible and to teach the Word of God, they are two different things. And people misunderstand them. People mix them up. So that's a, that's a word teacher. No, he might just be a Bible teacher. Now, to teach the Bible, all you just need is your natural intelligence. Oh, Yes. So you can have a professor who's not even born again teach the Bible so well. Because it's a written document, it's just like um, someone who's a good constitutional lawyer. All that means is he studies very well, then he's intelligent enough to put things together. You understand what I'm saying? Now that's what all it takes to be a Bible teacher. You don't need the Spirit of God to be a Bible teacher. That's why I know sometimes we say, um, we're doing Bible study. We must be careful how we use those phrases. Because you might be doing Bible study. Don't mean you're building people in the word of God. Please note this difference. It will help you. So we have lots and lots of Bible teachers. But we have very few word teachers. What's the difference? So who's a teacher of the word? A teacher of the word is one who explains the mind of and focus of God. Now that one, you may not find it by just reading the Bible. You need God. I come Shaya. You need God to open your eyes and show you. You see that? Now that's why it's not enough to say, I've, I've read the Bible 100 times. Now, I've read the Bible several times. I'm sure by the time I turned, by the time I turned, maybe 25, I had read the Bible cover to cover, maybe close to six or seven times. I'm being moderate. Because there was a period I was doing it every year. Yeah? So, now... But the knowledge of God that I function in, I don't say is because I have read the Bible cover to cover. No, sir. Because even after reading the Bible several times cover to cover, there was a time, I mean, 
I, I used to pride in that. I said, just tell me a phrase in the scripture. I'll tell you which book. I'll tell you who said it. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? No, there, I mean, there was a time I was, I was priding in that. Just give a phrase in scripture. I'll pinpoint it. Even if I can't tell you the exact verse, I can tell you the book. At least I will tell you the book. And I'll tell you in that book who made that statement. But you see, the more I walked with God, and what turned my life around was a scripture I found in John chapter 5. And I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you. This scripture turned my head. And it made me to start a new journey in him many years ago. And that began to redefine my life. And I pray for you that you find the truth early. Truly, that you find the truth early. Look at this now. John chapter 5 and verse 39. Look at what he says. He says, you search the scriptures. And that's what I, I love doing. You search the scriptures. For in them, now he didn't just say you read books. He said you search the scriptures so in the days of jesus there were scriptures see that now now of course paul's scriptures were not there you know what we call the new testament they were all not there but they had scriptures they had scrolls they had the prophets they had them jesus read from it so that's the that in their day they had all these materials available and they were called scriptures you see so take note of this now it says Jesus speaking to the Jews. He was talking to the Jews. He said, you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. Why do we search the scriptures? Because we feel this book is the book of life. You know what I mean by that? So when you know, we preach those things. When you know it, when you preach it, when you, when you, when you read it, confess it, you will have life. Jesus saying here, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. Now look at verse 40. You, but you are on, you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. I saw the scripture and I remember meditating on the scripture for weeks. Now, that's, that's me. I can take one word and I'll be on that word for weeks. So sometimes when you see me teach on a whole topic for a whole month, it's, it's not just today. So I looked at that, this statement, this scripture, and I was like, because before then, all I knew about the scripture was, was um, the, new, the old King James. Because the old King James just said, search the scriptures. Now we use that to tell us, even Jesus said we should search the scriptures until the day. You now I'm just reading through and, and I, just, I saw this scripture like, I remember then I was doing a study on just the words in red. See that now? Now, I've read the Bible cover to cover. So now I was selecting, sometimes I'll just do a study on, on the prophets, you know. So I'll do a study on that. Then sometimes I'll do like Daniel's prophecy and things like that. So now this period I was doing a study of only what is written in red. Only red. So I, I use the red letter edition of the Bible. Now just, I'll jump every other discussion in green. Now just taking out, I even started writing down, you know, some of those things. Now I was taking just the words that came out of the mouth of Jesus. That's all I was reading. Then I found this scripture. And I think, you see, because sometimes the mindset with which you study something, will open you. That's why when you are one who is practicing the word of God, you will know a lot that the one who's not practicing doesn't know. Why? It, it's like uh, a, an engineer that went to, to school to study engineering, like right? maybe mechanical engineering. Now, when you study mechanical or every other engineering, the, the focus of your study is design. See, they teach you how to design equipment. They teach you how to design machines. You know how machines work. You know what makes them work. But you may never have seen those machines work. Then you have a mechanic who did not go to school like you did. 
The kind of school he went to was someone sitting him down and dismantling that machine and showing him this is pistol, this is this, this is this, this is why this thing works like this. So, so when this thing is not grinding, this is what is the problem. You understand? Now, now he, he now he, both of you have knowledge. But when you're stranded on the road, who do you think will be of great help? The one who knows the design or the one who has seen and experienced the workings. Of course, it's the one who's doing the work that will be of great importance at that point. The design fellow can think of the future. How do we make good, better machines? How do we make things to be? Now, you understand what I'm talking about? But the guy there is the fixer. You see that? Not because the engineer does, does not have his own value. Like I said, he comes up with ideas. He comes up with how to make machines and how to make things better. He comes up with all those ideas. But the one who does the work. So now, when a man, and here's the truth, if a mechanic now, now goes the extra mile to study engineering, think about how excellent he will come out. Not in, not, I don't mean in flying colors, I mean in practice. You get what I'm saying? So when a man is just learning the Bible, and he's just learning it. He, he went to Bible school. He's a scholar. He loves to explain. He loves to put all those scriptures things together. It doesn't mean he will solve life's problems. But a man who is a doer of the word will solve more problems than the other man. Why? Because the man who is a doer will have many reasons to call forth specific scriptures. Now, in the calling forth of those scriptures, they now begin to make meaning in this light that he finds himself. You understand what I'm talking about? So, the, the, a man who does the word. Now, that's what I was saying. So, now, when I now began to like, okay, you know what? This thing, if it's real, let's leave it. So, I began to specialize in looking at certain scriptures. So, that I was studying the words of Jesus just to understand how Jesus reasoned. Because you can know a man's thinking from his words. If you can get a collection of his words, you can tell how this man thinks. Now, those are my thoughts. Praise God. So, I looked at this scripture and I'm like, you search the scriptures. I'm like, this is not an instruction. This is a reprimand. Why would Jesus be reprimanding them for searching the scriptures? Oh, it was a reprimand. So the whole idea came before me. So, oh, you search the scriptures because you think inside the scriptures you will find or you will have eternal life. We all want eternal life. That, that's why we study the Bible. And these scriptures testify of me. And then he didn't say, and you will not find out about me so that you will have life. No. He said, and you are not willing to come to me. I am the buyer. So there is the scriptures. And the scriptures testify of Jesus. Yes. But here is the game changer. The Jesus, the scripture testifies of is alive. Ah, Alabayagaba. Ah, now, 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 he wasn't just referring to them in that day. Now I'm here, come to me. No, no, no. He's still alive. Praise God. He's still alive. Then I realized, I say, oh, 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 oh. The scriptures talks about eternal life. But they do not give eternal life. Hear me, I'll say it again. The scriptures testifies or talks about eternal life. But they do not give eternal life. So all the testifying of the scriptures about eternal life was pointing in one direction. That Jesus is coming. Now Jesus has come. 
What are we supposed to do now? Run to Jesus that we may have life. Ah. Now, running to Jesus does not necessarily only mean I come to give my life to Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, the one you give your life to is alive. He is alive. He, he is alive. He's not dead. And because he is alive, it is so important that you find out when somebody is alive, what do you do? Do you still break your head and arguing about what the person said and what the person did not say? You simply take your phone and call the person. Sorry, I mean an argument um, concerning this thing you read about in the statement you made. What do you really mean? It, it solves the problem. You see, the problem with a lot of people, they really don't believe that Jesus is real. They don't believe. They act like they do, but they don't believe. If Jesus is real to you, there are arguments you should never find yourself in. So sometimes when I see people arguing and stuff, I say, like, these, these people have work. Rather, they don't have work. So they are giving themselves work by arguing. When I see preachers argue, like, what are we arguing? The thing we're arguing, we can ask him. Or don't you believe we can hear him? You see, you now realize that truly, many people don't believe that they can hear God. They don't believe. Because if we believe we can hear, why are we arguing? See, I'm going to be sharing with you this month on being a witness. Being a witness. And it's a very important teaching that you need to pay close attention to. Because I'm trusting the Spirit of God, your life will never remain the same after this series of teaching being a witness that's what i'm starting on this note you can't be a witness of someone you have not experienced you can't be a witness of someone you read about your witness will not be solid you will fail at some point that's why i say a lot of people they were on fire for the lord but somewhere down the road you see them you can't tell whether they are still born again what happened to their fire they never met him. They may tell you, oh, I had an experience. Jesus walked into my room. That's when, 20 years ago. Are you still in touch with him? The fact that he walked into your room 20 years ago doesn't mean you'll still be in touch with him today. That's why he told us, and I read that to you in, in Hebrews, says today, today, not yesterday, not last week, not last year, today, if you will hear his voice. If you'll be a true witness, you need to hear his voice when? Today. Brothers and sisters, let's stop all these rough things we, we, we are playing. Let's be serious. We're approaching the last days. And if we're approaching the last days, then we need to be serious with the way we do things. I trust the Spirit of God. He will help you. I trust the Lord will open your eyes. He will open your understanding. I'm telling you, you will never remain the same again. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my time is up. But I bless you right now. That the Lord will open your understanding this month. That every communication we will have through this broadcast. That the Lord will give you light and life through them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.